one. And we are back with another outstanding episode of the Square Table Degenerates. Today, we are joined by actress Patrika Darbo. How are you today, ma'am? I'm doing well, thank you. And you? I understand you're freezing. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's, I don't, we don't have as bad here in Cleveland as they do in like Chicago or on the whole coast because they got, they got slammed in like Massachusetts and, uh, I saw Chicago got like a foot. It's, and then KC for the game, they the Dolphins are going to the Chiefs and that game's gonna be like zero degrees, negative 30 wind chills. So, I mean, bundle up, people. It's, uh, it's crazy out there. <laughs> cold, 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 cold. No, I, um, and I noticed this morning Michigan was really getting, hit with the cold and stuff so yeah i lived in milwaukee for a long time so trust me i I don't miss that okay milwaukee i I, mean it's been forever since i've been to milwaukee for some reason i haven't been up to us even because i was a kid we lived in the suburbs of chicago for a little bit we didn't go up to wisconsin too much it's Uh, been forever i my my stepdad was with the braves organization when they were the uh milwaukee braves And and then we went to atlanta so yeah so did you get, I, I didn't know this at all. Did you get to meet Hank Aaron back in the day and Eddie Matthews and all those oh, guys? Yeah, what? Honey, listen, Henry was the doll and Eddie Matthews, Warren Spahn, all of the 57. Oh yeah, babe. Yeah. Oh, that is so awesome. Well, my goodness gracious, this conversation could take a whole nother direction. That's, that's <laughs> great. I love it, man. It's Hank Aaron, Eddie, man, those Braves teams. Oh, now, when yeah, they, Randall, Del Rice, all of them. Yeah, babe. <laughs> Now, when Johnny they moved, <laughs> now let me ask you, your dad was up there. Was there, was it like culture shock moving from, you know, M- Milwaukee down to Atlanta when the Braves moved? What was up with that? Well, I, you know, we moved in my senior year, which was really hard uh, of high schools. But um, uh, we, my mom and dad, when they divorced, we lived in, uh, in we were in Jacksonville. I, so we were I, all about my brother. We were born in Florida. But when my mother divorced, we went to live in Wisconsin uh, when, uh, she remarried my dad and then we were in Milwaukee for a long time. Then we went to Atlanta and um, then I came to California. So. Okay. Now when you was down in Atlanta, it said on your, uh, your wiki that you were a credit manager until like 84. Now oh, I did it there, but then I, when I went to, um, when I moved to Los Angeles, I was not, I'm not cut out to be a waitress. Cause I'm like, Listen, you didn't tell me you didn't want mayonnaise when I got the order over here. So what the hell is the problem now? You eating the mayonnaise? <laughs> now I didn't. That didn't work out. And here's your broccoli. Oops, it's in your lap. Sorry. No, not cut out for that. Um, so I continued working in credit. Then um, I uh, worked my way up to being the national credit manager for James B. Lansing Sound for your big JBL speakers. And then I had um, uh, an epiphany. Like, okay. Um, told that it didn't fit the corporate image for me to be acting part-time though I never I always turned in vacation time I never took time from them and so I decided let's see my salary's here and my part-time stuff is here so perhaps credit manager doesn't fit the corporate image either so anyway so I'm very blessed so from 84 on then I've been a working actress yes Okay, so back when you were a credit manager, did that say, I mean, nowadays it's just like you hit the button and it's good. Did you have to like call people and wait days for stuff to come back in the mail? How did that work for getting approval for stuff? Well, it, you know, when, listen, things have changed so much. I used to have to call up and say, where's my money? And people would go, um, well, if things aren't selling, I said, you've got my product? Yeah, then return it. I'll give you a credit for it. Because if you're not going to pay for it, it's not yours, it's mine. So it, it was tough back in there. But, you know. I got to be the little actress at times too, like people not returning phone calls. And then you call up and go, oh, hi, they is Leo there. Oh, just tell him that it was about other night. Could you just get on the phone for a minute? <laughs> hi, Bill, where the hell is my money? Listen, damn it. This is playing tricks to anyway. So yeah. So I got to use the acting everywhere. I was just going to ask that. So like this, this, uh, you know, you kind of worked as a informal collections at that point. Did that, that was just a logical transition into acting that did you do stuff back in Atlanta? You know, little, little commercials and stuff like that. How did you first get into Not that? Not so much back there. I uh, mostly I was in like I did little theater there, and I did um, uh, you know worked with Theater Atlanta, and uh, so then and, and I think Theater Atlanta has changed so much now too. It's been a long time. I still have family there, but um, when Ted Turner fired my dad because uh, he didn't fit the corporate image, being four foot two, um, he went on to work at the Astros, and uh, so. 
Uh, yeah, I have a few stand-up things about that, but I, I don't think they're printable. <clears throat> and it would hurt my reputation now. So. <laughs> we're playing the, the Browns. As you can tell, we're, I'm from Cleveland, so we're playing. the Browns are playing the Texans this weekend. It's not the Astros, but it's still in Houston. I was going to go to that game, but the man, the airfare was just like 600 bucks. And I checked earlier today, it was like 900 bucks. And it's like, you know, I'm not going to pay $900 just to fly to Houston, Texas. Well, yeah. first of all, you pay it and then you get to the airport and they won't let you on the plane because everything's iced over and you can't fly out. Right, right, yeah. You know, the weather. Who knows about the weather exactly? Right, yeah. And you get in Texas and then you can't get home. So, you know, turn <laughs> with, on the TV. <laughs> and with my hobbies, you know, the excessive marijuana use, I do not want to be caught in Texas. Because <laughs> well, it's legal good. here. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's been legal out there for the longest. Yeah, we just voted it in here uh, last last fall. I mean, I, I've had a medical card forever now, but yeah, it's uh, it's nice, good time. I, hopefully, nationwide here soon. Crossing fingers because that's gonna change the world, in my opinion. But uh, well, for me personally, I kind of think when things are legal, then it stops all the illegal stuff coming in. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, that's it, it's your choice, and unless you're forcing it on somebody else, then my body my choice your body your choice you know but up, again mm -hmm. yeah i was gonna say up until the 30s 1930s the government didn't tell you what at all what to put in your body you know, coca-cola had what in it come on really right cocaine oh, well. can, you, can, you, can you imagine society now patrika if like they still had that stuff and people would be spastic as hell if they still had cocaine and coke yeah going like this oh, i'll have another coke <laughs> <laughs> yeah not so the, the, the production of factories, the whole would go straight well, to the It's like whatever, like this. Uh, listen, today was, um, I did a, a what they, there's a lot of things, they gifting suites where they ask celebrities to come and just look at different products. And there's a company here, and I can't even think of the name of it, and I put the bottle away, but they were giving away honey vodka. <laughs> it was very nice. Uh, and it's a very small organization. Uh, just a husband and wife team and they do it in Glendale, but it was so good. It was kind of like, kind of like sipping stuff, but you could add soda, not anything else, but like soda to keep that nice honey taste. And so it was very nice. It was very nice. And I should give them a plug, but I don't remember what I did with that bottle. But anyway, so. Yeah, that happened. So you get down there and uh, you're doing movies first or TV first or what, what did you, I mean, I, obviously you got a lot of part-time roles over the years. And eventually went to the soaps, but like, what did you first start doing commercials? Like, how when did you? I, I first started. I got my SAG card doing a commercial, um, and that was for Herfie's Hefty Hamburgers. Because <laughs> I'm a hefty girl, and I'm sitting on the bench minding my own business, and this little nebbishy guy comes up and sits down with his hamburger, and the whole bench goes like this, and I slide down to him and hi there. <laughs> <laughs> and they have this stoned pigeon pigeon on the back of the. He they put this pigeon behind us, like we're in the park, and the pigeon is sitting on a toilet paper roll that slid down the bench too. And the, the bird was flying, <laughs> so we had to wait for the bird to come back. And the bird fly, and they were like the one. The director at that point came by and said, "Staple its feet." And I went, no, "Oh, oh no, I, I can't be in that." Anyway, they was kidding, of course. But yeah, finally the pigeon. I think they took him off in the back room and doped him up because the pigeon sat there kind of like, "Okay, oh." <laughs> So, yeah, that was my first thing. And then I did, I mean, you, I think you grew up with me and maybe you didn't even watch television then because I did things like Give Me a Break and Different Strokes. And, oh, yeah, I was, I was watching back then. I all was those, I mean, oh, yeah. way back there. So doing all of those. And um, then I went on to do Growing Pains for, and I think I was uh, three different people on five different seasons for that. And so <laughs> it was fun. Um, and then, you know, then I did some more movies and one film got me put under contract to ABC and they sold me to Lorimar. It is kind of being sold. Uh, and then I did Step by Step with Suzanne, may she rest in peace, and Patrick Duffy, so, and all the kids who are wonderful. So it was great. That's awesome. Step by Step. That was that TGIF, wasn't it? The Friday yes, that was it. Somebody else said the other day, people don't realize TGIF. It was like a point the thing on Fridays, and you know, you turned, you watched everything. There was Urkel, and then we came on, and then the Fuller House, and you know, our full house at that time. So yeah. That's great. Yeah, because yeah, because they got the reboot of Fuller House. They never did a step by step. Did they do a step? Have they ever? That's a good question. Have they yeah. ever thought about doing anything like that? Step by to step remake. Honest, or I, I, to be honest, I don't know. Um, you know, uh, Bob Billiet is still here. Tom Miller, those were great, and then they worked with the other part of the team. So, I, you know, at this point, I've never heard anything like that. You know, and, and Peggy Ray, who played 
uh, our mother. She's passed away. Now Suzanne has passed away, but Christine Lakin is still working. She's wonderful. She was Patrick's daughter. And um, I believe that, uh, um, I, I think she went, to, uh, most of the other kids went on to college and do different things right this moment. They're, they're not acting anymore, but I know Christine has been, but she's married and has her own kids too. She does a lot of stuff at the Gary Marshall Theater, so. Okay, okay, yeah. Wow, that's a, that's a blast down memory lane, man. Speaking of a blast down memory lane, I remembered, because I was looking you up, and obviously, and I remember the saw the Roseanne thing, and I, I hadn't seen that in probably 20 some years. It's been a while. I watched every episode of Roseanne back then. Now, when you were, I got to ask you about this dream sequence. Now, do you recall uh, the take? It's, uh, did you have to do more than one take? Because, like, that was such a preposterous scene. It was just so funny, your language. When I attack, when I attack John Goodman, Marge has <laughs> come over and be yeah, hello there. At being his dream lover was fun. It was also fun working with Roseanne and things. Too. I mean, it was iconic television at the time, too. So I was very lucky to do that. And then to be fortunate to play her in the NBC movie of the week. So. Uh, it was great. How was that? How was that? Was that? Did they come to you with that? Was just uh, was that like a and and because it's been a minute since I was that like an authorized biography or just kind of like a? I don't think it was authorized, but it was because um, I know Fox was doing it at one time, and then NBC was doing it, and both Stephen Lee and I were um, offered by Fox and offered by NBC, and uh, you know NBC being in a bigger network at that time, we felt more exposure, so we went there. Um, uh, I think at the time, Roseanne wasn't very kind to Denny Dillon, who played it on the Fox network. Uh, she was very nice to me. So uh, though she said she gave me my start in show business, but, you know, being a lot older than her at the time, I was like, mm, OK, maybe not. Uh, uh, but listen, she was very nice to me at one point. She just didn't like I cried. And I said, you know, well, the director asked me to do that. So it's like as an actor, you do what your director wants you to do. So, but, yeah. Great experience. It was a fun experience. Um, Stephen Lee, who played um, my husband at the time, he's Tom, Tom Arnold, has passed away. He was wonderful at that, too. Um, uh, and if, if you watched anything like The Negotiator with um, that was just recently on reruns, do you remember the film Negotiator? Vaguely. Vaguely. Well, he, was, he was one of the other cops down there that was getting yelled at. <laughs> so anyway. All right, now a couple of these questions. Now I keep in mind I don't. It's been a minute since I've seen some soap, so I, I reached out to a couple uh, friends who are soap opera aficionados. So if I have questions about the questions that I'm asking you, forgive me. That's just how this this works. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, well, and, and and I have to think now. Okay, remember I got to download things. They don't download as fast anymore. <laughs> I mean, I look damn good, but honey, the brain is a little, you know. Oh, tr trust me, I tell you, I know I smoke a lot of weed. So this the old, <laughs> the old gray mare, she ain't what it used to be when we was back in the military. <laughs> now, it's a, you were incredible and bold and beautiful as the younger Sally Spectra's aunt. Do you yes. have a memorable storyline from that or one of your favorites that came out of that uh, that whole role? Well, you know, it was funny. Dar Darlene Conley, who who has passed away, she, um, she was the original Sally Spectra. And Hell on Wheels, what a wonderfully talented and kind lady she was. To, um, and at the same time, we were I was on Days of Our Lives at the time when Sally, the original Sally, was still alive. So there were other events that we went to together and we took pictures together. And uh, anyway, there's I think there were a couple of us posed on a piano goofing around like anyway. So when I came on to um, Bold and the Beautiful um, and thank you, everybody there, uh, there were pictures on the set of Sally, who was supposed to be my sister at that time. Um, so it was a great experience in that it made me part of the family. And um, it just was so when we walked on the set to see all of this, it was great. And then I was working with wonderful people. I mean, Alex Weiss, who came in to play one of the characters that had been the original Sally's backup for years, he was a relative of hers anyway. He's now a big Broadway. He's done Broadway, and, and he just was in the show, um, and I can't think of it because it's not downloading, and I didn't even take a hit. So um, anyway, but he's there, and of course, at this point, Courtney Hope, who plays the Sally now, and she's moved over to Young and the Restless, she's un unbelievable. What a wonderful lady, and she does a lot of capture where they put buttons on you. She does a lot of video game shows. She's amazing, absolutely, so. 
Um, and and the, the noob who was the our, our goofy secretary and receptionist was, I mean, it was a fun thing that uh, uh, Brad Bell put together. It was it was a great opportunity. So. Okay, sweet. All right, now what was it typically like? And this is a very generic question. Apologize. I, I, I kind of wonder this myself. You know how it is. I, I've never been on a soap, so I just gotta know. What is it typically like on the set of a soap like Bold and the Beautiful Days of Our Lives? Do you guys like joke around constantly to pass the time when they're changing sets, stuff like that? Well, first of all, you don't change a set. You just move to another set. Okay. Uh, it generally, this, it's a stage and it has like different rooms of different things that are going on. And we work on two stages. So in the morning, we're on this stage. On the afternoon, we move over to the other stage, which also has all kinds of sets. Um, there are some that rotate, like if you've got to have a jail cell, they'll build that for you. But normally there's not a lot of goofing around and stuff. And um, in, the, in the makeup trailer while we're there, we joke back and forth and talk. But when we're on set, that moves very fast. And you have to remember, too, we're mostly everybody's learned about 30 or 40 pages that you have to have memorized every day. So every day, every day you know, if you see every. somebody day <laughs> yes. if you see someone on a soap and they're at, you see them on monday tuesday wednesday they never left their house for a week practically unless they were 10 years old and then they go okay got it <laughs> like this. so um a lot of memorizing a lot of hard work moves very very fast so you often don't get a second or third take um and, unless you really screw up uh, but it's it moves very fast you need to have it memorized um, and stay in character. So that's so crazy, man. 40 pages of lines a day. I can't remember because I like started, you know, doing stand up. I saw by trade, I'm a stand up comic. So, like, I couldn't even remember a five minute set, much less. Than three. <laughs> this is it wild. Is. No, is, how, do you, how do you do you like how do you memorize? I mean, is, after a while, this is just second nature. You just look at a page. Yeah, you, and you I mean, after through. you start doing it a while, it comes a little bit easier because it's still a muscle that you're training and you work faster. It was a little harder when I first started in the 90s because, you know, the show, you, you shot virtually the same show, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday was a summation of everything and then the cliffhanger for what was going to start the next week. Mm -hmm. And so you, you may say, today I was at the store and then, or I'm going to the store. And then the next day you said, well, I was at the store and so it stays in that same day practically. And and sometimes a day can last for like two weeks. So. Okay. How long is a typical day for you? I mean, what time do you get in the office or sort of speak the studio? And then how long, like eight, nine, 10 hours? How long is it? It's a long time. It's sometimes 15, 16. Sometimes <sighs> the, if you're on a, if you're on a movie set, it can run even longer and things like that. Um, it's, it's a hurry up and wait business because you, you've got your lines down, you go in there and then suddenly the light's not there or you're working with somebody taller so he's not lit there or you, and then you have to make sure that he's not casting a shadow on your face. So our producers are all out there trying to make sure and then they go, no, the camera's mm -hmm. got to go further left a little bit here. Can we bring that light up? So you have to wait while someone comes and screws the lights and does all that kind of stuff. So it's a teamwork effort, but it takes a long time sometimes. And that's why most of us all call it a hurry up business. You know, it's like okay. hurry up and wait. Oh, hurry up I'm and wait. familiar with that. It's been my entire life. Hurry up and wait. I work for the government. So I know. <laughs> well, it's hard to some, you may have a call. It's like for six o'clock in the morning to get into hair and makeup. And you're going to be in the first shot, which starts like at nine. So, and then at nine, but you may also have to be on the second stage, which means you go to lunch and then you come back and you have to wait until the end of the day to do your scenes in that particular set. So you could be there for, you know, 14 or 15 hours and stuff. But you, have, you know, you're in your dressing room. Uh, a lot of times there's a TV in there so you can watch what somebody else is doing or you can bring your whoever you're doing scenes with. You can come, have them come in or you go to their room and you run lines so that you keep it very fast and snappy. So. Okay. The Days of Our Lives, do they still film that in that Burbank and NBC Studios? Yeah, it's not the NBC Studios now. It's called the Burbank Studios. NBC, okay. because when they, when they sold it and took over, all of that went up to um, Universal, which is just mm -hmm. kind of around the corner and up the hill. Uh, it's the Burbank Studios now. And yes, they have the same two stages, the stages that Laugh-In was shot on way okay. back when. And, uh, you know, and then you come in the front part, there's the old Johnny Carson Theater. Then there's the um, uh, other Tonight stage, which why well, I'm blanking here. Uh, Jay, Jay Leno's stage. And mm -hmm. uh, 
So and, and entertainment tonight and access were shot there a long time ago. So um, there's a lot of production going on there. I think I shot shot Punky Brewster there when she was like, what, like eight years old at the time. And uh, now she's married and has her own kids and doing stuff. So yeah, that was yeah, a great tour. It was, uh, we took it back in 2003. I think I did it because like you walk in and like outside they have like a cafe. It's been, I haven't I watched Days of Our Lives for me like a month or two. Back in 03, 02. Yeah, if you come in the back door, there used to be the, the, the Salem Place. That's that, what, yes, Salem Place, they had the prices for all the drinks. Yeah. Oh, yes. And, and if you went in through this door, it was where the shop was. You could buy your NBC paraphernalia and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah, yeah. But that oh, wow. kind of got weather beaten and it wasn't safe to work there anymore. So that uh, kind of okay. But yeah, that was cool. I remember there was, a, there was an, ad, don't remember the actress's name, but there was a character named Belle and she was in college. That was the time frame I visited that because oh, I remember. Yeah. I don't know if it was at that time, if it was Martha Madison or if it was, um, oh my gosh, there we go. Download again. Hello. Hello. Um, oh my gosh. Chris. Oh Lord. I can't think of her name. And she went on to GH for a long time. Uh, oh gosh. I can't think of her name, but there were two different bells at one time, you know, cause one left to do something else. And yeah. Well, that's crazy. All right, we got a question from uh, Captain. He says, why are actors jumping between Hollywood and TV so much more now? Why are they jumping between Hollywood? I, I don't understand the question. Hollywood and TV are kind of the synonymous. So what? what I think what, maybe he's asking, like, why are they doing so many movies? And Well, and it's streaming has, well, streaming has taken over. I mean, that was part of our strike last time was like, we want to be paid for our work there and we want to see residuals. And um, and they said streaming is not really making any money. Yet at the same time, just two blocks away from me now, they're building 16 new sound stages at Warner Brothers to accommodate streaming. And they just built around the corner the other way at Universal, they built, I think, 12 new sound stages for streaming. So I guess streaming is doing something you wouldn't be spending all the money building these things. So. Um, and, and streaming, it's changed so much. I mean, what it was three, it, three networks in the past. Um, mm -hmm. and you saw your episodics there. There were a lot of different things. Now it's like streaming a show is maybe eight episodes. So if you want Meryl Streep in this episode, you got to wait till July when she's through with that one, then you can have Meryl Streep over here. So it's still not a lot of actors working because you're, t they don't have to be commit as long. And I remember when, a film actor would never do television, ever. And now they're all doing television. <laughs> so it's crazy. So some of us who've been around for a long time are going, well, I guess my career is over. <laughs> so, you know what? Well, but I think I'll be in a pine box trying to get, and I'm not done yet. Let me out of here. So. Well, it's funny with the streaming because, like, everybody, you know, bitched for all these years. Oh, I don't want cable. I don't want cable. I want individual channels a la carte. And, you know, we're kind of there with the streaming now, but like people got what my take on this, Patrick, is like once you go to an environment where you don't have to watch commercials, you really don't want to go back to an environment where you got to watch commercials. Like, no, I but I think some of them are going to come back. You don't want commercials, you're paying $20. You don't mind commercials, you're paying 15 So yep. you now have an option of $5 more. You're going to have to not watch commercials, or you're going to have to, it's that kind of thing. And when you think about it, how many streaming things are going on? You got your Apple and your Hulu and you're this and you're that and there you're this and you're that. So if, there's not an actor in this world that should not be acting right now. I mean, because there's so much going on. But again, you go back to the fact if it's eight episodes, we won't start our episode till she's finished with that one. You know, it's like, but it's true. As a fan myself of different things, I'm going to tune in to watch something. So uh, because I like that person's what he does. Listen, honey, at the same time, I'm still watching old NCISs. So <laughs> I, go, I go in the house and people are just watching Big Bang Theory all day and Roseanne and, <laughs> and uh, yeah, King of yeah, Queens yeah. and all these all these shows. It's well, that's a, I was going to ask you this later, but I'll ask you this now. What do you think is the future of like soaps and sitcoms and stuff? Because I mean, it's like you don't really have the traditional sitcom, the, the budgets they had. You know, I mean, if you got something now, it's usually very hastily put together very quick. You know, it might be funny, it might be not be. You know what I mean? They tend to, in my opinion, they tend to green light a lot of stuff that they think, there's so many reality shows. Like, 
and obviously, you know, in places like YouTube. I think Google, most of the networks are all going to reality or game shows and stuff there because the money's now in streaming, which of course is not really making any money. But however, so it, I, I'm not sure. There, when I first started in 1998 on a soap, there were still like 12, 12, I think it was around 12 soaps. There'd been like 20 something. Um, and there were in New York, there was you know, all my children as the world turns. I mean, all those soaps were in, in New York. And then out here was General Hospital, you know, Young and the Restless, uh, Days of Our Lives and both Beautiful. I mean, so uh, and I, I'm not sure where it's going. I think the fan bases, when you look that some of these people have been watching, they were watched with their grandmothers now then they and their mothers. And then, you know, I mean, I have a fan who's become a friend whose daughter was in a car accident. She's 14 in a car accident. We need to contact your mother. What time is it? Uh, it's one o'clock. <laughs> no, I can't tell you what time it is. And my mother is watching Days of Her Lives and I can't interrupt her. And she would not tell the police where her mother was until two o'clock. That those the fans are diehard. They're diehard. And um, you know, and for days moving to Peacock, we lost some because it, it is expensive sometimes to sign up for these things. But a lot of them like the fact that now it's on Peacock, they can watch it in the morning, the episode in the morning while they're having their coffee, you know, when they get home late at night, and, you know, or if they work all day. It's just they pick the time they want to do it. So there's there's a good part about it. Um, I'm not sure where they're going to go, but if the soaps go, there'll be an uprising for a lot of little old ladies to kids wanting to know where is my story and what's going on. So uh I'm really not sure, though we technically we've come so far. And I mean, that's one of the big fights that the actors and everyone are doing with the AI right now. Worried yeah. about, you know, this is me and I don't want you to take this and put somebody else's mouth in it. Or, you know, um, though sometimes if they want to make me a little like five, eight, <laughs> you know, 110 pounds, maybe. <laughs> Maybe they can AI me, but no. They can AI uh, some awesome guns. Yeah, yeah. Over, over, right? <laughs> it, it's like, yeah, it's, it's the future. I mean, it's, it's so hard because um, I, I'm not a spring chicken. And I've seen that where the three networks were, the, the remote control was me. Change the channel to two. Yes, daddy. Up you go and change the channel to two. You know, it's that kind of thing. So we've seen so much technically. And now movies are being shot on this. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and some television shows, and uh, it's it's amazing. And some of the young people that are coming up are so creative and wonderful that um, I don't think this genre will ever die out. Uh, it'll just move somewhere else. And a perfect example is you look at like uh, Dallas when Dallas was on. That was a soap opera. You tuned in each week to find out what was going on. That took at least two weeks to shoot one episode. Days of Our Life shoots a new episode every single day, and it's the size of a movie script. It's crazy, right? Yeah. So um, it's hard work. I loved every minute of it. I have so many fans and so many friends that have become fans. Our fans that have become friends. It, it's amazing. Um, and I think you can talk to most every one of the um, daytime performers. It's the same thing, that they value their, um, their fans. I got to plug Peacock. For $5, Peacock's a great app. I really will say. I think you got all the WWE stuff. You got all the original NBC stuff. You got football games now. I mean. If and you're days of our lives. Woo! <laughs> yes. If you're going to bitch about stuff in life, don't bitch about Peacock. Bitch about your Netflix, whatever, maybe some other apps. Leave Peacock alone. For $5, you're never going to find a better app. That's just me talking. And you know, guys, I, I give you guys the truth. I love me some Peacock. All right. We got a question from Sparkle. Uh, very view loyal viewer. She's a lovely lady. She says, do you enjoy the... Uh, let me read this. Did you enjoy the demands of daytime soaps, and do you still have contact with your co-stars? Absolutely. Well, you're, you're still actively yeah. doing soaps, aren't you? Well, I, and listen, honey, at, for a performer, work is work. We we love what we do, or we can you know go back to tending bar, though I can't do that. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, I love every bit of it. I still I, listen, Christian Alfonso, you know my co-star for a long time, who played my husband, Kevin Spiritus. Martha Madison, Eric Martzoff, all of those from there. Courtney Hope's on the other one. So, I mean, uh, Tamara Clatterbuck, uh, Jennifer Garris. I mean, there's just so many on all the soaps that I've been fortunate to be a part of 
that um, definitely, you know, definitely missed them. Um, but you're never through. They usually ask you to come back. I mean, I've been back at 98. I left in 207, came back in 211, came back in 213, came back. in. So, yes, it's a I loved every minute of it. And again, work is work. It, it's, it, and the difference is sometimes that's some of the hardest work because of the memorizing and how fast it shoots. Uh, I just did a commercial for the Super Bowl that I can't tell you what the product is yet because it hasn't been shown yet. You have all these NDAs and anyway. Um, so I'm, I, I'm, I'm very fortunate that I get to do the voiceovers and the commercials and the on camera and the print and all those things. So um, I'm here to stay for a while. And I want to say that if the soap called me right now, I'd be back in a heartbeat. That's awesome. All right. Uh, Sparkle also writes, uh, my mom and I were so addicted to your soap that we would separately record them and watch them again together later over a happy hour. And that's that's the norm. That is the norm. I mean, um, oh, I, I'm going to have a download problem at this point. Um, pretty woman. Pretty woman. Help me out here. Pretty woman. Julia Roberts. There you go. Julia Roberts and her mother used to do that all the time. They would watch Days of Life. She was a big fan and stuff like that. But yes, so many of them. And, and it may not be mother and daughter, but it may be a fan that's from Iowa talking to somebody that's in Florida or Georgia or someplace that said, oh, my God, did you see what happened last night? You know, it's crazy. Um, you know, and look, there's so many. You don't sometimes realize how talented the actors you work with. But like Eric Martzoff, Carson Boatman, Wally Kurth and uh, Brandon Barish have the um, day players. They're a wonderful musical group that they, they all sing. And they forget sometimes like, you know, um, uh, Eric came from doing Broadway. And uh, I mean, while he's been playing in his own band and stuff, for, I mean, it's amazing. Uh, and Nadia, who played my daughter on the show, she sings wonderful opera all the time and can sing most anything you ask her to sing. She's be beautiful. And her, you know, she has those great eyes. I don't, I don't know if you know who, and people generally fall right in love with her. Um, so uh, it's amazing. Yes. That's awesome. All right, we got a question from this is uh Angie wrote this question, and I don't know too much of this because I don't think I've ever actually seen Young and the Restless. But it says, Now that Sally has crossed over to Young and the Restless, will you be seeing you visit her in her storyline? Um, I did come in, and this was during COVID when um I I filmed all of my scenes at my publicist's office at his desk. He's filming me here, and I'm looking in the computer as if we're having a um, Zoom call like this. And um, so I did a couple of different episodes there. Um, and if they called me, I'd be there in a heartbeat. I love Courtney Hope for much. And everybody at YNR has been so wonderful to me. So yes, I'd go there, you know, in a heartbeat, in a heartbeat. That's awesome. All right. Now, do you get recognized a lot from Seinfeld? Now, that was like one of my favorite, <laughs> favorite yes. scenes you did. It was, uh, it, it was it your idea to have the character just basically yell the whole time? Like Linda was just like, ah, she was just yelling. Was that in the thing or did you just make that it, it was just my, It was my interpretation, my my did. They, they seemed to enjoy it. And then uh, then um, I got to come back. Jerry, uh, Jerry hired me to come back and do that little scene at the mailbox with uh, Nor. Oh, what's his face? Um, John Capello. So I hit him on the yeah, show yeah. a while back. Yes. Love John Capello. Uh, what a anyway, great guy. You know, so it was. You know, so it's fun. It was, and I was doing at that time, um, Burt Reynolds show, um, that I can't think of the name of right this moment. So I, and he didn't work on Mondays. And so Seinfeld shot me on Monday and then I went back to work on his show on Tuesday. So, uh, um, you know, I'm very fortunate and I, I, I have to tell you, you work hard to get where you're going. Um, and if I can tell anybody in any genre or whether it be tending bar, doing a radio host, is this your stand up? It doesn't cost you a dime to be nice. Ever, oh, ever, right. oh my god! Treat people the way you want to be treated all the time. Amen. Right. And now, speaking of uh, treating people, I like being treated. Now, we like vets on this show. I'm a vet myself. Uh, you got to tell me about the work with the. Uh, forgive me if I mispronounced this because every time I Google it, it came up as Thailand. But Thalians is that how you pronounce it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the Thalians. I'm on the board of the Thalians, and the Thalians was started back. In I think '64, I don't have all the fight. And like I said, downloading is not good right this moment. Um, started by Debbie Reynolds uh, and uh, Jane Mansfield, and um, we there's a wing at the St. Cedars Hospital, the Thalians wing there. We now work with uh, UCLA Operation Mend, 
And it's basically we donate money. Oh, I think we just gave them 250000 uh, this past December. We try to give them that much on a regular basis. We, uh, we're strictly a 501c3 uh, fundraising thing. Uh, Operation Men takes care of our returning vets. Okay. Um, uh, it takes care of mental health of our returning vets or our vets that are still here. Uh, one of our spokespersons that are there very much is Joey Paul. Joey Paul was burned severely. He um, totally disfigured, burnt. Um, and he now speaks for us. They helped him here and here and, uh, and here. And I think that's part of the thing is making sure that the people that served us, that we serve them. And that's, uh, listen, that's part of it. I'm a VFW member for my dad. Uh, I'm an elk. So we support all the military and things like that. It's very important. Um, they give their lives for us. Let's at least return the favor in some way that helps them. I love, the old, I love the old joke of what does VFW stand for? Very few women. It makes me laugh so much. <laughs> it, yeah, it's very few women, but we're in the auxiliary and totally we hunt it. We handle everything. <laughs> uh, I actually was, I was a member of the VFW up here for a year or two. I got to actually renew it because we did a comedy show up there and it was fun. We had a blast, man. God, that was fun. And we we're going to do a second one. Then obviously everything closed down, the pandemic hit. And that's when I got, that's when I started talking to celebs on uh, on YouTube. We, were, we had the weekly show, like we'd just sit around in the garage and talk. And then after things shut down, I just had the bright idea. Well, let me start hitting up all these celebs and stuff. And then, boy, that just kind of—I'm not saying it blew up. I mean, for what I, for what I do, it's it's great, man. It's great. I love doing this. Well, now, who I would... love, it's, it's, I love doing them too. And but the most important thing is the realize that I get up every morning and put one leg in a pair of pants and one leg in, and I put them up, and then I go to the bathroom like everybody else. So, um, for my personal things, is my celebrity is only because of you. So, um, and I appreciate it. Thank you everyone for that. Um, so I, I don't ever want to feel more important than someone else. Uh, I think we all work hard at, at whatever we do. And um, I was just fortunate to have my dream come true. And if I tell anybody else again, it's like, if you have it, you want it, go for it. Don't let anybody tell you you can't have it. Right. And they always, always ask too. All they, all they can say is no, you know. It's, well, it's a no until you ask. Oh, I like that. It's a no until you ask. That's awesome. All right. Who would you pick out of the Beatles or Queen? We ask every guest this. Uh, golly. Let me see. Honey, y'all remember that I'm old and that Elvis rules the world. It's God, country, and Elvis. I don't know if I could pick out who the thing. I kind of like, well, I did a commercial years ago with Ringo. He was so fun. Um, then I think. I guess, I guess, I don't know how to pick who I want to do that. Though I like the guy that goes with that tongue down to here. He just kind of makes me excited all the time. <laughs> so you were mentioning Julia Roberts earlier. That, uh, there's a movie called Charlie Wilson's War I saw you were in. <laughs> yeah, I got to do that one too. What a great movie. If you're out there and there's two movies I recommend with Patrick in them that you haven't seen it probably in a while, Charlie Wilson's War and Santa Claus, The Search for Santa Claus. And oh, also, honey, you silly, like in the line of fire? What the hell is that? Oh, I, I, I do like in the line of fire, but Santa Claus, <laughs> Santa Claus, because like my kids love the buddies movies well, with the you know, air like and all that. You know, I listen. I did like I think three of those in search of Santa Claus, and then there were two other ones. One was with the the Christmas puppies. I don't remember the name, of it, but that, that was a fun thing. And I got to work with some great. Well, you watch Seinfeld, so you saw when you're watching that that I, you know, anyway, so. Yeah, the little the, the it was a whole series of them. My kids loved them, and to this day, I would think we still want them. The, there was this one called Spooky Buddies. It was like a Halloween. <laughs> oh, they love they love it. My daughter was because uh, it came out the same year my daughter was born, two thousand nine, and she loves loves. But we haven't watched it in a while though. Had a great movie. It Love is. Spooky I mean, Buddies. they're fun and, and they totally family, totally you know fun things for the kids to remember and stuff. And though I do get recognized from that and stuff, though I was Mrs. Claus, so I was totally white haired and everything else. So it's good. All right. Now, after a while, do you uh, just get called for stuff or do, do you still, I mean, because you've been around for a minute. I mean, you, you've done a lot of roles. I mean, do people just say, hey, Patrika, we got this role for you. Do you want it? Or do you still kind of? Well, in some audition? cases, I've had that happen. Um, like, I'm, I'm very blessed that I didn't have to audition for any of the soaps that I've been on. Um, and uh, thank you again for everyone for, who helped me with that. Um, I, uh, I, you know, I still have to audition for a lot of stuff. 
um, it's a very competitive world. And um, I, listen, it, if they want me to audition, I'm there. If they want to give it to me, I'm very happy. <laughs> so, you know, and it's, it's been very hard because remember with COVID and then we went on strike that most actors have had to do everything on Zoom. You know, and, you know, as an older actor, for me, when it's relating to that other person, mm -hmm. you're looking in their eyes and you're talking to somebody loud, you have more room to do stuff here. I've got to stay in front of that and, and do, yeah. And it's, <laughs> it, I find sometimes that I'm not doing my best work there because I'm too concentrated about, is, am I in the shadows? If I got everything all right, those are going on in the back of my head. And I think sometimes, um, I think I bet I've been around, around long enough that people know that I can do the work. So. I still have to audition, but I do get offered roles at times too. That's awesome. All right, a couple more questions, and we'll, let you, and we'll get out of here. Uh, now, how, oh, I was going to ask you about the Big Bang Theory. How did you same, was that uh, something you auditioned for? Or was that uh, how? I mean, it, it was only like a couple seconds. We just. Uh, I, think, I think that that one. I, I'm not really sure if I auditioned or if I got called in. I know it was one of the, all the guys were terrific. I mean, everybody came over and welcomed us at the table and said hi, how are you? And uh, it was terrific. Um, and a lot of the people there were from Roseanne. A lot of the, uh, that's right. Yeah. Johnny Glucky, you know, yeah. yeah. So that was fun. So, um, I, it was the easiest work. You came in one day and then they shot you and then they went, that was so good. We don't need you the rest of the, it was, it was terrific. <laughs> it's like wonderful. And it, like all of you, I'm still watching the reruns going, Oh my, this is <laughs> so it's great. That's great. awesome. All right. Before we let you go, uh, what kind of projects do you have coming up and how do people get hold of you? Well, you get a hold of me because I'm on I'm Darbo Patrika on Instagram, and I'm just plain Patrika Darbo, and I in a and I'm in a blue dress. Do not go to that other. I don't know who sets all these things up, but it's like I'm flattered. Thank you very much. Unless you start putting me naked on there, and but I better be AI if that's happening. Um, anyway, that's how you can get me anytime. And um, you know, my fan club is run by Debbie O'Connor. Uh, and so I've got a lot of things there. Uh, and if you message me, I can, I answer most everything myself. So, yeah. All right. We got one more, one last question from JC, JC, my buddy, JC Cleveland up in Washington. Great dude. He says, you've been married 50 years. What's the secret to your success? The secret is that marriage is not a 50, 50 proposition. Marriage is a 100, 100, because if either of you come in just 50% worth, it's not going to last. So come in. Come in 100, 100. Beautiful advice from the lovely Patricia Darby. Thank you so much for coming Thank out. Thank you, honey, very much. It was amazing. It was amazing. Thank you. And I have to sit there going, how the hell do I get out of here? No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, honey, enjoy yourself. Be safe and uh, watch your lungs. That's all I can say. 100%. We'll see you guys over at Captain's over at about an hour and a half. All right, see you guys. Love you. Talk bye, to you guys later. bye right. everybody. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.